in last session we discussed about couple of SQL Server related stuff and um, couple of uh, topics on SQL Server like um, uh, what is the logical query execution way of a select statement and also joins. In this session we are going to discuss about a uh, couple of things like unions first thing and how to create backup tables using queries and uh, we are going to discuss about subqueries which is very very important concept. So this subqueries concept is also present in MDX but we have not covered it as it is not of high priority. So we can spend one session on that once you become familiar with subqueries. So to start with let me go to the database. First thing is creating a backup table. How to create a backup table like uh, creating the backup and uh, loading the data. So let's say I'll take a product table and select start from dim product. So this will uh, this is having 606 records. You can see it, the record count and uh, how to generally in general how people take the backup and load the same data into the new table. So what they will do is first they will go to the tables and they will take the structure or they will take the syntax of the create statement. You can see script table as create to a new window. That means it will provide you the create script to the new window and they will name it as underscore test1. They cannot have the same name, right? The same name already a table exists and they will execute it. Now, yeah, the problem with the primary keys and the primary key names and so on. So the primary key names already exist. So we have to give a different name. I will give it as underscore test1 and what is the other one this is changed and uh, this needs to be changed the foreign key name the name of the foreign key is fk underscore something underscore blah 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 so I changed all these things executed there is already an object ak something in the product let me change this one to ak underscore it is here I'll name it as underscore test one so what I've done is I change the table name and the primary key foreign key and all those stuff used in the same table uh, the names will be repeated and hence it is throwing this error and now it is having one more oh shit it is having a lot of uh, primary keys man what I will do is I will delete this primary key stuff I don't want to maintain anything here this is the easiest way so what I'm doing is I'm just executing the table oops already product table is created okay now First what they will do is they will take the script and they will create the table and as part of the next step they will use insert into table name dim product underscore test one. I am inserting data into this table. You, you We already discussed about this query. Just I am refreshing. I am just uh, refreshing the concept. That's it. Select star from dim product. So the same column should be there oops there is an identity column and we cannot pass the value I have not seen that this is not the best table to show this example let me take some other table if <laughs> this is really showing me hell so let me go to MSD database where I have a couple of tables select star from employee underscore info is one table name if I execute this I have uh, six records so now let's see let's follow the same steps how people uh, take the backup of a, an existing table the first step what they will do is they will take the table structure that is create to a new window script table as create to new window and I cannot give the same name why because object already exists so I will come I have given info one if I execute this the syntax the table is created and the next step is insert into 
newly created table that is employee underscore info one select the data from the main table employee info so what I am doing in this statement is get the data from employee info table and insert into the newly created table that is employee underscore info and you can see six records affected so let me execute both the cell both the let me get the data from both the tables now select star from employee info and employee info one the one I created uh, to maintain a backup so if you see here both are having the same so the steps I followed is first take the back, uh, structure of the table execute it and then use the statement insert into so and so there is one more way to do the same that is you, the combination of select plus insert like select star here we will have in, insert part into new table name employee underscore info 2 this is the name I want to give from employee underscore info if you see this query this query is the combination of select statement as well as insert statement insert this part into employee info 2 is the insert part if you see that insert into employee info 1 byte that is this insert into this into employee info 2 this is in part of insert statement and if you remove this let me cut this you can see select star from employee info this is select statement by so using the combination of insert statement and select statement you can create a backup there is no table called employee info 2 at this point of time right so if I execute this six rows affected let's see whether it created or not employee info 2 I executed all the three you can see the third table is also created with the same data what this query will do is the query first gets all the data from the table and create a similar table the table with a new table name that is given here and loads the data so it will do three jobs creates a table with the given name and the structure is by getting the structure of this particular one and then loads the data from the table main table I can say so it will do these two, these two jobs one single query sometimes people will ask for uh, man I just need structure I don't want data in it I just want structure of the table let's say employee info table or something else so how you can do that so to do the same you can use the same query but having some where condition which will filter the data right where 1 is equal to 2 obviously 1 e is not equal to 2 at any point of time 1 is not equal to 2 so it won't retrieve any record but oops already 2 exists so let me go for 3 it won't uh, get any records but it will create the it will execute the first step that is creating the table with the given name so if you see the structure will be created for this table but the data will not be loaded you can see select star from employee info 3 is having blank records so why I am explaining all this stuff why you need to take the backup I mean backup of a table most of the cases in software companies in real-time projects whenever you are working in for any software project you need to take the backups why because there will be an important table very very important table let's say in this case dim product is a very important table if you find an issue in the data you cannot blindly change it why because it will have impact somewhere else somebody in some other place people might be using the same data so you cannot blindly change it and if your change is creating more problem to the project then you will be fired from the company it will be a very serious issue not fired it will be a very serious issue so to be on safe side what people do is they will take the backup if they want to modify dim product table let's assume so they will take the backup and they, they will name it as dim product underscore the date the current date so on this particular date I have taken a backup and this is that this table is having the data so next day if any problem comes because of your the change you have done to the table you can easily restore the data from one table to I mean the backup table to 
the new one or the sorry the uh, main one so that is why backup taking backup is very important and that's why i explained this stuff how to take the backup of a table now i have three tables or oh, sorry three or four i think three which is having data you can see these three are having the same data in last session we discussed about joins and it's all it's good to spend a couple of uh, minutes at least on unions what is union you know the join will join two tables the union union also join two tables but the difference between join and union is join joins two tables column wise so the columns will be attached uh, to demonstrate the same we take the pen let's say this is your first table which is having some three columns and this is your second table so i have four columns in the first one and three columns in the second one so in this case if you use join it joins column wise so it will become like this the end table we shall have 1 2 3 and 7 columns so it is joining column wise this is join so to do the join what is the criteria there will be at least one matching column right the data should on one column in both the tables should be matching at least so this is the criteria for joins now let's see union i have a table one with three columns i have a table with two columns if i or three columns let's say three columns if i union these two the output will be like this you'll have three columns and up to here this is the first table data and the second table data it this data joins row wise but here the data join the two tables joins column wise that's the major difference between union and the uh, join in union the first and foremost criteria is while writing a select statement you have to make sure the first select statement columns let's say i have written select statement on this table it has three columns and the second select statement columns are same are, i mean the number of columns should be the same that's the first and foremost criteria you have to make sure next thing is the first column in the first select statement and the second column in the uh, sorry first column in the second statement should have the same data type this data type and this data type should be matching the third column data type and the third column data type here should be matching these two are very important factors that you have to keep in mind while writing unions now let's see how to write unions so i'm taking uh, all these tables so first what i'm doing here is there are two types of unions one is union and one is uh, another one is union all let's start with union all first so this is the first select statement you have to write union all the second select statement that's it you don't need to add any condition like that the only check you have to make sure is the number of columns should be same in the first select statement that is uh, this one and the union in second statement the the second statement so this one and these two tables are having same number of columns that is city country employee id name and state as you can see on the screen and for this one also you will have the same why because this is the backup created from the same table so uh you can see it here when i keep the mouse on uh, asterisk you can see the columns that are present if i execute this it will union these two tables and you can see the same number of columns are returning but the rows are concatenated and i can union n number of tables union all this is done all the three table data is joined row wise now let's see what is this is union all union all it will fetch the duplicate data also you can see this record is duplicated here and also here same data present in it. so the union all brings the duplicated data whereas union will not bring the duplicate records if i make it as union you can see only one set is coming why because the duplicates are removed and it is not mandatory that you have to go for either union 
or union all for the complete query. If you see this query, for the first two statements, I am going for union all and the second the one and the third one I am going for union. So the first two statements will fetch, oops sorry, the problem here is, first these two will be executed, right? And uh, the record set will be, will have 12 records, the first table records and the second table records. And then this guy will union with this. So what will happen? It will have only uh, distinct records and hence it is not coming. Now let me show you something. What will happen if I give all union all for the second query and the third query? You can see you are getting duplicate data, which means first this query will be executed and it will get only six records and then it will join, it will union with the third query, which will fetch three more records total, sorry, six more records total, 12 records. So this is about union and union all. What will happen if I remove a couple of columns from here? I'm giving only employee ID, comma, name, comma, city. Let's say I don't have three, uh, uh, all the five columns in my table. Assume that. I can't create a new table now. So I'm saying let's assume. Or I can create a new table. It's not a big deal. Uh, what I'm going to do here is select. I'll, I'll go for one more table, table four. And here I'm going to give ID employee ID comma name comma city. I'm getting only these three columns and pushing it to the employee four table, right? And now I will add it in the union part. Star union all <coughs> select star from the newly created table with only four or three columns. You can see the same if I, when I execute this. Now, if I execute the complete query, it will throw error saying that while go, go, going for union, intersect or accept operator, the expressions, columns should be same in count. This guy is having problem now. This guy is having only three columns. How to overcome this? I can have two blank columns as a state. This is the one which is not present and blank as country. This is one workaround. So then now the number of columns should be matching and hence it is getting the data but the missing columns is getting uh, filled with blank value as specified in the select statement. So this is how you can go for unions and uh, <coughs> unioning two tables or two select statements with um, not exact match of uh, columns in I mean, count wise if you see. So you can expect a question on the differences between union and uh, join just to confuse you guys people will ask sometimes. So better keep in mind about union and it's a good option you may be you may need it. Uh, so it's always good to know or you know, good to have an eye on union and union all and how to union two tables or two select statements. Next we are gonna look at some important concepts in SQL Server that is subqueries. Uh, subqueries, what is meant by subquery? Subquery is nothing but a query inside a query. So generally you will have one, say one select statement, right? Uh, if you have one more select statement inside a select statement, then that will become a um, subquery. Or we can call it as nesting of queries. Let's say like this. Select star from table name where some condition is equal to instead of providing some value you can have a select statement here blah 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 table name so this is the query which is inside the main query the outside but this is this query is called uh, outermost query and the, the this query is called inner query this is inner query and this is outer query so when two queries are uh, nested then we call the inner one as a subquery this is the subquery for this main query. So what is the advantage of having this? Um, why, why we need these subqueries? Sometimes while checking the condition or while filtering the data, you may not uh, uh, able to hard code some value. If you want to check based on some dynamic values, then you need these subqueries. The best example is 
while working on SSAs, you'll be getting errors saying that the key column is not present. The attribute key is not available, so uh, it is uh, creating some problem, blah, blah, blah. Something is there. Let me go for it once again. Okay. Uh, I'll go for one example here. Let me go to AdventureWorks database and let me take a new query window. Select star from fact internet sales. This is the data I'm having and I'm going for select star from dim product. So to demonstrate the same, to demonstrate this uh, sub queries, what I'm going to do is I'm going to remove a couple of records from uh, product key, product table. So what I'm going to delete is delete from dim product uh, where product key less than 7. That means all the values that are less than 7 will be deleted. <clears throat> but I cannot go with this option straight or I cannot straight, uh, straight away delete this. Why? Because I need this data for, for my future sessions or future reference, right? I may need this data. So what I can do? I can create a backup for this and store the data and I can use it. I can restore it whenever I need the full data. So uh, taking the backup, select star into this is how we take in real time, in real time projects. Dim product underscore, what is today's date? 14 02 2013 from Dim product. So to execute this, <coughs> you can see I have a backup table ready now. I can play with the Dim product table. This table is ready. Whenever I want, I can restore the data from this table to the uh, main Dim product table. See, this table is ready for me, which acts as a backup. So let me delete this stuff. Now I can delete these records. Six records deleted, less than seven I've given the condition. And you can see those six records are not coming. So if you run, if you create a pro SSAS project with these two tables, it will throw error saying that there is a master key, the, uh, there is an ID one in the fact table, which is not present in the master table. And we call these records as orphan records. So now, I have to check what are all the records that are missing. How can we do that? Using subquery. Subqueries is the best option here. You, you can do the same job using joins, but uh, we prefer to go with subqueries and performance wise, it's almost all same. It won't be, it won't have much difference. Now let's see how to write, uh, how to write a subquery. Select, star, um, before going, uh, for the first example, let's let's discuss about the type of subqueries we have. We have two types of subqueries. One is self-contained. Second one is correlated. So we have two types of subqueries. One is self-contained and another one is correlated. What is meant by self-contained and what is meant by correlated? It's very difficult to explain. Uh, it's better. Uh, if I explain with an example. So let me take an example for the self-contained. And each self-contained and correlated is subdivided into two parts. One is scalar. Another one is multi-value. So we are gonna see all these stuff or examples for everything in this session. First, let me go for self-contained scalar. Okay, when the inner query returns only single value, then we call it as scalar. So as I showed you here, the syntax, if this inner query returns only single value, then we call it as uh, scalar um, subquery. So whenever you are using equal to, there should be only one value returning. If it returns more than one value, then equal to will not work, right? Obviously, whenever it is equal to, only single value should be given. When it is returning multi values, what you have to provide? You have to provide in, in condition normally. Hope you still remember the concepts, basic concepts of SQL Server. So equal to means single value should be fetched for this from this inner query and we call it as scalar. And if it is in operator, then it can be more. 
I'll give you an example where color is equal to will give single value, right? Where color in we can give multi values like black, blue, and so on. So this is the difference. This guy is accepting two values. Why? Because the operator is in and if we use in here, if the inner query is fetching more than one record, we call it as multi-value, whereas if it is returning only one record with the operator equal to, then we call it as scalar sub-query. Let's see example for everything. Select star from fact internet sales. I want to get the fact internet sales where product key is equal to uh, seven, let's say, where product key is equal to here instead of hard coding the value okay uh, my intention my requirement is to get the maximum product value whatever the product value maximum that is present uh, I want that value if you see the maximum value is 606 but this will be keep on changing if tomorrow some other guy adds a product so uh, a new value will be coming to the table so in short, my requirement is what is the latest or the most recently added product and its sales. I can get the sales information from this table where product key is equal to what I have to do. When I use is equal to the inner, the inner query should return only one value and we call it as scalar subquery. So if I use select product key from dim product table, this will throw error saying that the subquery more than one value subquery return more than one value but I'm using the operator equal to right see it is clearly given in the error you can see this is not permitted when the subquery follows equal to not equal to less than less than or equal to greater than greater than or equal to whenever you are using these operators the inner query that is the subquery should return only one value and we call it as scalar subqueries so what is my requirement I want to get the maximum product that is what is the maximum value of this product key and for that if there is any sales I want to return now this inner query will return only one value that is the maximum value that is 606 in this case and the outer query will generate uh, all the records in the fact internet sales with the uh, product ID, product key 606. You can see the product key is taking is 606. And if you give greater than, then it will get the maximum value that is 606. And if it will try to get if there is any fact internet sales records where product key greater than 606 which is not available and it returns 0. If you give less than, it will return everything except 606. You can see you will not find 606 here. Why? Because I have given less than. If I give less than or equal to, uh, you will get even 606 in the result set. And in the same way, greater than or equal to. So for all these operators, you can go for only, the, uh, sorry, the subquery should return only one value and we call it as scalar um, subquery. And these kind of subqueries, what you are seeing here, are called as self-contained subqueries. What is meant by self-contained? The inner query, I mean this query, is not dependent on the outer query. It is not dependent on the outer query. It is just passing value to the outer query. It is not taking the help from the inner query. If you see here, this guy is passing value to the outer query, but it is not taking any help from the outer query. So this kind of things is called as self-contained subqueries. This is an example for self-contained scalar value subquery. Now let's see self-contained multi-valued ex example for multi-value. It will be the same, right? The operator will be in. If you give in, you can get all the product keys if you want. Get all the fact internet sales where product key, select product key, in the product key in this list. 
So what it will return? It will return only the fact internet sales which has product uh, key in the master table. If I provide not in, what it will return? It will return the orphan records. Orphan records. Okay. It is not returning any records. Let me check why it is. I think there was no sales for the products uh, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 which we deleted. Or else let me delete one more record that is 6, not 6. The product ID 606 is also deleted and it has foreign key referential integrity. So we cannot delete it. So keep in mind we have two types of uh, subqueries. One is scalar and multi-valued and uh, sorry self-contained and correlated. And each one will have two sub subparts or subtypes. One is scalar and multi-valued. Scalar means the sub inner subquery will return only single value, whereas uh, multi-valued means it can return more than one value. And the outer query will check in that particular set of records that is returning by the inner query. And it also depends on if the record, the number of records that is being fetched is more than one, then you cannot use equal to, not equal to, less than, greater than, less than or equal to, and greater than or equal to. So you have to use operator either in or not in. Or we have one more thing, greater than any. So this is uh, one more thing which you can use. So what this greater than any will do is, this is returning so many records, right? This is returning so many records. It will check for the product which is greater than any one of this product. So in this case, 346 is greater than any one of this product. True. 336 is greater than any one of the product key. We have product key starting from 7. So it will check and retrieve any greater than if it is greater than any one of the records so that is how you can use greater than any and there is one more keyword that is greater than all so this returns uh, the data for the sales where it is greater than all the products all the product keys that is being fetched by this guy so if this guy is fetching uh, from 7 to 606 Sorry, 541. We have only 541. It should be more, right? It is not in order, it seems. Yeah, it is not in order. Let me check. Select product key from dim product. Yeah, it is not in order here. Let me order it. Order by product key. Let's see now. We have a uh, starting one is 7 and ending one is 606 but here if you give greater than all it will go and check it will get all the product keys from here and it will check the product all the product keys with all the product keys in the that is being uh, fetched from by the inner query so it will fetch only when this product key will we have product keys from the 1 to 606 in this table also this should be greater than all of this it is not a possible scenario right so if you give equal to greater than all of this then you will get the record for the last one why because this is greater than all the records or equal to at least the maximum the all the product keys that is uh, present in the inner query so this is pretty tricky you just have to try it at home again and again to get good grip on this but it is very useful feature this is mostly used while checking the dates greater than or any greater than one date or greater than many dates you know, such kind of scenarios you use these things okay this is about scalar self-contained and uh, multi-valued self-contained subqueries now let's see correlated subqueries what is meant by correlated subquery when the subquery when the outer subquery is getting value from inner one and inner subquery is getting value from outer one. So that means the inner query is dependent on outer query. So if you have such kind of uh, queries, then we call it as correlated. Inner one and outer one is correlated. So that is called correlated subqueries. And let's see an example here for correlated subqueries. Now let's see an example for uh, correlated subqueries. Okay. Um, Let's say I want to get some select star from fact internet sales. Sorry. 
Shark Internet Sales. I'll, I'll alias it. I, I I can do it only by using aliases. I, I'm giving alias name A, where product key in. I'm writing select um, top one or top ten product keys from bin product. Okay, let's see what it will return. The first in the what the inner query will return. The inner query is returning 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, uh, 15, and 16. And if I execute this query, the whole query, you may not get data. Why? Because the keys that are present, the keys that are fetching by using the top keyword here, is not present in the fact internet sales. So what will be the best option? If I can get the keys that are present in this one, and if I get the top sale, I mean sales for the top 10 keys. So this is the top 10 keys, which is present in the DIM product table. And these keys are not present in the fact internet sales. If I can join these two tables, or I can pass value from here to here, so that it will check, okay, only the keys that are present in the fact internet sales, uh, get top 10 of list from that. So that will be helpful. The data will be retrieved. So what, how we can do is, I am giving alias where b dot product key is equal to a dot product key. So if you observe the query here, it looks very similar to the normal um, self-contained query, but the only difference is I am passing value from the outside table. I'm passing value to check whether uh, to pull the records uh, to pull the records from the inside table inside query only when it has the same keys as the outside table. So the product key from here I'm passing to this inside table. So this is what I said correlated subquery, which means both the queries are related. The inner query will get value from the outer query and the outer query will get value from the inner query. So to get to generate the inner query result set, it is taking the help of product key and uh, from the outer outside table and to check the outside keys, it is taking the help of inside queries output. If I execute this now, it will get data. Why? Because it will get the products which are present in outside table. So that is why it is fetching the data. In the earlier case, when I did not use the correlated subquery, it was not retrieving the data. The only reason is uh, that the keys that are being pulled by the inner query is not present in the outside table. So this is called correlated subqueries. You can have one record that is which means a scalar. If it is one, you can go for equal to right. So this one will become scalar, scalar correlated subquery, and if you go for what I can say uh, more than one records then you have to go for in statement this will be multi-value subqueries so this is how you can define correlated subqueries so what extra part you are going to do as part of this correlated subqueries is passing the value from outside table to inside table now Let's see where all we can provide these uh, subqueries. You can provide these subqueries in many places, like in select statement, in where class, in joins. There are many places where you can provide these sub, uh, subqueries. Let's see a couple of examples. Select product key. Okay, let me go for select star from product, dim product, sorry. This table is having so many records. What my intention is, I want to get product key. comma average of product key I want to get the average of product key with some condition or I, I can what I'm saying is I can inject a subquery here also I'm injecting a subquery select average of uh, let's say fact in the uh, sales amount from fact internet sales Oh, is it correct? 
the spelling. This spelling is correct. I select average of sales amount. It, no, it is not a form, it is from. From fact internet sales. So if you see this query, this is a subquery for which, uh, which I am using average of sales amount from the fact internet sales. Sorry, new page was opened by mistake. So let me close this guy. So this is the subquery I have given at column level. And if I execute this, you can see it is getting the total sales amount, uh, sorry, average of sales amount and it is uh, returning as part of the result set. So this is one way, one area where you can provide the subquery. There is one more area where you can provide subquery. We discussed about where condition where, where you can provide the where queries and couple of other areas are there like select star from uh, let's say DIN product inner join generally you will give fact table right um, fact table name that is fact internet sales and so on which means we, we, this guy will retrieve all the records from the fact internet sales and do inner join instead of specifying the table here you can specify a subquery select uh, product key So start from fact internet sales. This is the fact internet sales information. And instead of going for all the columns, I can go like this. Distinct or group by. I'll go for group by. Product key, comma, sum of uh, sales amount as sales. I have a non-aggregating column, so group by product key. If you see this query, this inner query in particularly, the one which I am using after the inner join, this guy will return product key wise sales amount, aggregated level. You can see only 158 records are returning. Earlier there are total, I mean in total 60,000 records in the packed internet sales. Here I am aggregating and I am calling it as A. And I am call, calling this as B. On A dot product key is equal to B dot product key. You can see these two will join now and retrieve the information. This is the product key and product table regarding information and you can see at the end the sales and the product key from the subquery table which I used in the inner join. So this is the beauty of subqueries. You can use wherever you can provide expression or you can provide uh, a table. So you can use all the stuff uh, in all the places like in columns, in where condition or in um, joining parts and so on. If you see here, if I provide English product name, oh yes, one column and sales to another column, the report, uh, the query output looks so beautiful. This is already pre-aggregated at one level. At product key level, it's already aggregated. So I'm getting fetching the data by joining with the um, DIM product table. So instead of using fact internet sales, if my intention is to get only sales amount, a sum of sales amount, then this is one best way to do the same. So this is how the subquery, the, these are the different types of subqueries, correlated and um, um, I mean scalar and multi-valued and self-contained and correlated. Correlated and self-contained will have these two types of uh, subqueries and this is how you can use and very very useful concept I'm saying. You will be using these subqueries again and again in your real-time projects. Now the next concept is table expression. This is very similar to subqueries but not 100% uh, same. Um, let's discuss about these table expressions in the next session which is very 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 important and there are few kind of requirements which you cannot achieve without taking the help of table expressions. So table expressions plays a major role to achieve some, some kind of requirements so uh, make sure that you will attend the next session. Thank you guys.